in this lecture we will discuss about back titration and this we will discuss in the context of acid base reaction let us say i have a solid sample so this is a solid sample and it is basic in nature so this is a basic sample this means it can be any oh it can be any 2co3 or it can be any hco3 you can also also have calcium carbonate this is also basic in nature so you can have cso3 so what is my task my task is how many mole of this base that is present in this sample so my task is to find out to find out that is purity of this sample so to find out purity and that is number of mole of base mole of base in given sample so to know this what we do so we take this sample so solid sample we take and then this sample we dissolve in excess amount of water so we dissolve in dissolve in water or sometime we can also dissolve in acid so let us say we dissolve in excess acid what happens when we dissolve this in excess acid this sample is basic in nature and we are dissolving in acid so what happens we have acid base reaction so here we have acid base neutralization reaction so this is acid base neutralization reaction so we have acid base neutralization reaction now let us say sample contains x mole of base and basically x is unknown so what is x mole of base mole of base in given sample and this is basically unknown so x is unknown so mole of sample mole of base that is basically unknown and let us say we are dissolving in bi mole of acid so bi is mole of acid that we have taken and bi is in excess this means i know bi is greater than x so if this is the case what will happen all acid all base basically all base will be neutralized by the acid and some of the acid will be left because we have taken acid in excess so some acid will be left after the neutralization how many mole of acid will be left if i assume this base gives 1 oh minus and this acid gives 1 h plus so we have a reaction that is h plus plus oh minus h2o neutralization reaction so we can say one mole of base gets neutralized by one mole of acid so if that is the case left mole of base basically acid is by minus x so we will have by minus x mole of acid left now what we do next when we titrate this acid so left acid gets titrated by so titrate using a base so we titrate using a base the left acid and in this time we use indicator so we can calculate mole of base used so let us say mole of base used mole of base used is z so z is the mole of base used so now let us say if i know the mole of base used i can find mole of acid left and both should be equal if i say one mole of acid is neutralized by the one mole of base in that case we can say mole of acid left is equals to mole of base used so we can write mole of acid left and this is equals to mole of base used so try to see here what we are saying so we have an basic sample 
This basic sample is neutralized by excess of acid. Let us say mole of acid is Y. Some mole of acid will be left because we are taking acid in excess. So how many mole will be left? So this is Y minus X if one mole of acid gets neutralized by one mole of base. Now Y minus X that is left we can titrate using a base. And once again let us say one mole of base is neutralized by one mole of acid and mole of base is Z then we can say mole of base used is equals to mole of acid left. So mole of acid left that is Y minus X and mole of base used that is Z. So from here we can calculate X. X is equals to Y minus Z. Now if you see Y is known, Z is also known. So what is Y? Y is the mole of acid initially taken. So mole of acid, mole of acid taken in excess. And then what is Z? Z is basically mole of base used. So you see Z is mole of base used. Mole of base used. And this is same as mole of acid left. If one mole of acid gets neutralized by the one mole of base. So mole of acid base used is equals to mole of acid left. Now if I know these two numbers we can calculate x that is mole of mole of base in original sample. So what is x? x is the mole of base in the original sample and then we can calculate percentage. Let us take an example of the same idea. So the example is here. Question says a sample of chalk CSO3 is contaminated with CSO4. One gram of solid mixture is dissolved in 230 ml of N by 10 HCl. 40 ml of N by 10 NaOH is required to neutralize the excess of acid. Find the percentage of chalk in the mixture. So let us discuss what we have. So we have a sample of, so let us diagram. We have a sample of 1 gram mixture. This sample contains CSO3 plus CSO4. Now if you add this sample into HCl and we are taking number of mole is 230 into 1 by 10 because normality and molarity is same in case of HCl. HCl has an n factor 1 or you can say it can give only 1 H plus so normality and molarity is same. So HCl initially taken is 230 into 1 by 10 that is 23 millimole. So we are taking 23 millimole of HCl initially. So HCl taken. Now this HCl is not all neutralized so I will have some left HCl and left HCl gets neutralized by 40 ml of N by 10 NaOH. So what will we have? We will have excess NaOH is so NaOH used is basically 4 millimole. So I have 4 millimole of NaOH excess and that is same as left acid. So I can say left acid, left HCl, this is equals to 4 millimole. And HCl initially taken is 23 millimole. So I can say HCl taken initially this is equals to 23 millimole. So now I can say HCl used, HCl used, this is equals to 23 minus 4, that is 19 millimole. Now you see we can write reaction, HCl gets neutralized by CoCO3 only, it will not react with CSO4, so we can write reaction of CSO3 with HCl. This will give you CSCl2 plus H2CO3. Now mole of HCl is 19 millimole. So from here we can calculate mole of CSCO3. 2 mole of HCl react with 1 mole of CSCO3. So mole of CSCO3 is half of mole of HCl. So mole of CSCO3 and this is equals to half times 
mole of HCl and this is half times 19 that is 9.5 millimole now once I know the mole of CSO3 we can calculate beta of CSO3 so beta of CSO3 this is equals to 9.5 millimole that is 10 to the power minus 3 into 100 because molecular weight of this is 100 gram per mole so I have to multiply this by 100 so this will come out to be 0 0.95 gram now initial sample was 1 gram you see the sample initially taken is 1 gram so we can now calculate percentage of CSO3 so percentage of CSO3 is equals to 0 0.95 this divided by 1 into 100 so basically sample contains 95 percent of CSO3 once again you see idea is very simple in case of back titers and what you have to do is you have to calculate millimole of HCl left and you have to reduce, uh, you have to subtract this number from millimole of HCl initially given we are doing the same thing here millimole of initially taken is 23 and millimole left is 4 so now I can say millimole of HCl used is 90 and then we have to write equations and then we can solve easily